Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel, Microscope Beauty. Today I am with my husband because we are answering some of your business questions. We asked on Facebook if you had any questions about, oh, hello, what we do, and we got quite a few questions. So I'm only gonna do six so this video doesn't get too long, but we're gonna share with you our thoughts and our answers. The first question is from Sarah Paradon. I'm gonna be terrible at your names, I am so sorry. But the first question is, what is the best and the worst thing about running a business with your husband slash wife? So what do you find is the best thing about working with me and the worst thing about working with me? Ready, go. Okay. <laughs> um, the best thing about working with Kayla is that, and I don't know if this is true for everyone. So like we're speaking from like my own opinion. Uh, so please don't take this like expecting this is how if you did it, it would be for you uh, But for me the best thing about working with Kayla is just getting to spend time with her um, Having someone that I trust and know uh, I know that even if we bump heads We both have the same intention because we're you know, our, our goals are aligned. We're both trying to protect our family We're both trying to make a way in life and we're both high achievers. So already I know that I, I have the most trustworthy business partner that I can get. Uh, and so to me, that's that, that's just the best part is just spending time collaborating with someone I care about and coming up with fun ideas and, and getting to hang out with them all day. What's the worst part about working with me? So the worst part. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> let me get out I'm my so, very long list. I'm so ready. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the worst part about I would say about working together is that you need time apart. You you kind of merge into this one like anamorphic person yeah. who uh, we run you don't out of do stuff any to talk yeah about. you just don't do anything else. And especially yeah. with the way that we work, we work anytime we're not doing anything else. It gets to the point where you kind of get short sighted, or sometimes you feel like like so. Th this last week, here's a perfect example. Uh, I had a lot of stuff come in. We had orders from Oh Hello, Oh Hello Promo. I had to do designs. And so I wasn't being nice. I was just like, I've got to get my work done and there is no sugarcoating anything. It's, hey, you got to do this because I'm so swamped, you're the only one who can. And so it gets a little, when you're short at work, that goes on to your partner. Yeah, I would describe our like work personal life as like a Venn diagram. Like we have work us and then uh, married us and then they overlap. And sometimes that switches, like what becomes more important overshadows the other, like a solar eclipse where just something becomes more important. Like last week, Alex's work life was like more important. Not that like our marriage is less important, but it but, overshadows yeah. it during our working environment. So that is definitely something to consider if you're wanting to work with your significant other, that there will be times where work us takes precedence over married us. Like yeah. we always make jokes about being like, is this friend Kayla you're talking to or wife Kayla you're talking to or yeah. work Kayla you're talking to? Because that way you don't take things too personal or uh, too serious because you know it's not directed towards you as like wife husband, but like as a work colleague thing. But. But it's okay, because I have like the coolest wife ever, and she totally understands that I can be an a-hole I mean, we all can be sometimes. 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 Ah. Question number two is from Suzanne, and she asks, how do you decide when to expand your line of products? Are there any new exciting products on the horizon? So Alex, I find, is the like new ideas guy. Sometimes I come up with like, I really want enamel pins, and then he makes it happen for me. But more often than not, Alex is like, we really should try this. So I think he's just always trying to push us into different directions. So there's never like a time where we like think we need a new product. It's more just a transition as you discover things, you expand your knowledge of what we can do, you meet new people and find out yeah. that we have like possibilities of doing like tea towels or something. And that's kind of how we expand. And a lot of his artwork also prompts us towards new products. Like you just designed this kit, I'll include a couple of photos of it where that seems very kitchen vibe. Yeah, no, I agree. So it might push us to doing actually making tea towels and things. So yeah. there isn't like a time or a place where we're like, now's the time for doing the thing. It's more just what are like emotions and the way your designs are progressing that changes what we create. I would say, so like my 10 cents is that 
uh, new products are almost reflective of our personality. And so what I mean by that is I'm always trying something new. Back in college, I was trying 100 new business ideas. And I'm literally, my method is spaghetti at a wall, see what sticks. Um, so that's my favorite part of a business is coming up with new ideas. So yes, I'm always looking for opportunities. Hey, did you know uh, the guy who makes our shirts can also do hats? And so then we try hats and things like that. Uh, where So I'm always innovating, I guess you could say, but they're not always good. A lot of times my ideas are flops. Like we we'll, we tried so hard to do socks and we just realized- yeah, socks it, were too hard. Just a little too hard for us. Yeah. It took away too much from the business. So now we have like hundreds of socks in our basement that we just aren't- We just have a we lot realize of it's, socks. it's not worth it. Now, I guess that sucks. Anyways, so, uh, but Kayla, on the other hand, does come up with a lot of new ideas, but they're much more select. She's very selective about, hey, I've yeah. noticed this trend. I know that I'm falling for it. I know other people are going. And so she is, she's more like R&D, very safe. I, yeah, I wait with my ideas. Yeah. Like I kind of let them stew a little bit. I might wait a little too long. That's how I feel. Because then she'll come up and say, oh, did you know? So... Here, this is exactly a perfect idea uh, example of a, a new thing on the horizon, which was Kayla's idea. Uh, we are coming out with dot grid notebooks, yep. and we can do them in multiple sizes. And I'm going to say we bought a bunch of blanks right now, meaning like they don't have names on them. We're going to put, we are going to make stickers that fit exactly in the on name. On the cover. On so the cover. you can like put a different. But eventually, we're looking at having them each customized the way Aaron Condren does covers. So each cover can be customized to what you like. But they're like traveler's notebooks. So right. Like A5 size, that kind of thing that you put into um, like Foxy Dories. Yeah. So and those, are, those should be journaling. here. By Come, the time this video is live, they should be here. Be here. So the problem that is, is that, yeah, by the time Caleb was like, hey... By the way, bullet journaling is like a thing and not just a thing, but I think we have a good, like, I think people would like our designs on their covers. I feel like we kind of missed the, the initial yeah. boat, but I'm okay with that because Dari, so another example is like Dari stickers was like selling really well. Now we have a wall of Dari's that they still sell, but we way overestimated yeah. uh, the Dari's hype. So that's, a, uh, I think, one of the reasons why we're gun shy. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry if these go long. I <laughs> we have a lot to say. We've got a lot to say. That's why I only pick six questions because I know that when it comes to business, we don't talk about it too much. On our vlog channel, we do. So if you want more of this, I will link that below as well as above. We talk about it basically every video. Yeah. But once you get us on this topic, we could go forever. Question number three comes from Alexa James. What do you guys do on days when sales are down? We panic. No, we don't. Panic! Uh, so, well, sometimes we feel a little bad, but usually we like to figure out what is causing it. Yeah, like, so this last week, sales have been just, like, atrocious. Not even there. Like, Nothing. And I think we've taken a little better than we've taken slow days before because we finally were like, look, it's back to school. Everyone's shopping right now. Spending uh, money on other things. Other things. They're yeah. moving. Even though we have a lot of back to school stickers, check them out. Um, they're just not priority number one plus you've got the hurricane going on in texas which texas is a huge part of our market so i mean we're hoping they're okay but that's obviously something people are thinking about so try to figure out first is it external or internal yeah why for sure um and then so i guess it's kind of to figure out can we control why sales are bad is it because we didn't do instagram is it my fault because i haven't done i haven't given the people what they want design the things right because like i know i did those bullet journal hand-drawn stickers and people are like losing it over them uh, as much as you can as, as much as you can and i haven't done anymore and i feel horrible about that because like yeah i feel like too when sales are down you can't get super hard on yourself right because obviously if we could do everything all the time there wouldn't be any problems if alex could design yeah. all the stickers everybody wanted constantly and did like customs and everything we'd, be we'd probably have a ton of money but we are just two people and there's only so much you can do. So yeah. I think the biggest thing that for anybody who has a business, do not be hard on yourself when sales are down. Sure, it might be have something to do, like maybe you didn't have any new releases, but take that as an opportunity to be like, this is a clear clear consequence. Of you know, but not I'm not doing, gonna be hard yeah. on myself and just give up. I'm gonna try it Fix better. It. To, try yeah. better tomorrow. And another way to look at it too, like just a healthy mindset 
is, and this is true for everything from business to stock trading to just your day-to-day -day life, so if you're not even in a business, is that I know sometime in the future, I'm going to cry because Kayla will make me sad. It's gonna happen. It could be her death. It could be, oh, oh, yeah, I, I don't know. Whoa. But it's some, I, that's true though. I know in the future, something is gonna happen yeah. that will make me cry. And I'm not just saying Kayla, I'm saying, so that's everything in life. I know my business is going to have a day where it's gonna be tested. In, 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 if you think I'm gonna get through 70 years of more living, and not have a day where my business is tested, you're crazy and you're not thinking straight. Um, and so the opposite holds true. There are gonna be days where it's gonna be amazing and it's gonna be the, the what, this is clearly like divine almost. Yep. And so knowing that those, no matter what you do, those days are coming, you can kind of just, when they get here, be like, well, I knew it was It'll coming. Of course it's going to happen. Of easier. course this is yeah. here. Yeah. But I also know that it's going to get better, yep. right? So that's, and, and if it doesn't get better, having a contingency plan, I think, also helps because it's like, well, worst case, we can, you know, try and get a yob or do something fun. We call them yobs. Yobbies. I don't know why. I don't want a yob. I don't want to go to yob school. <laughs> Question number four comes from Emily Van. What are you doing? They know what four looks like. Yeah, and it's adorable. Okay, well, question number four is, what is the story behind the names Oh Hello and Microscope Beauty? That's all on her. So, Microscope Beauty started in 2010, but it was called Under the Microscope when I first started because in my mind, I was like looking at life through a microscope and like examining my life. Uh, like, I don't know, I don't like science that much. Like it's cool, but I'm not like personally attached to science. But I just thought that was a really clever name. And then when I revamped my blog in 2012, I did Microscope Beauty because I wanted it more focused on like beauty style. Cause back then I was like super obsessed with it. So that's where Microscope Beauty came from. It was honestly just like, examining my life and putting it, it into the world. When we revamped it to Microscope Beauty, you helped me. Why am I above the telescope? Because it used to be under the microscope. Yeah, but we started dating in 2012. But my uh, YouTube channel was still called Under the Microscope. Ah, there we go, okay. Cause so. I'm like, so yeah. So if you've noticed, mine is called Above the Telescope. It's uh, a play. My vlog channel. Cause yeah. it was a play. She was under the microscope and I was above the telescope. Cause I love space. I am yeah. a nerd. His so head's was, always in the, <clears throat> the, the sky. I'm always in the clouds. Says. So I thought it was yeah. really fun to be like, I'm a big picture thinker, she's a detail gal. It just really yeah. worked out. And then I switched it And then it she to just be, left me high and dry. I so, switched it to be a little shorter, a little more concise. So now you know why mine is above the telescope. Yep, and that's where microscope Because I'm left alone. From. Oh, hello came from uh, how I always write my letters. So I've been writing letters forever, like for the longest time. When I learned to write, I basically started writing letters. And then around high school time, I used to start like them off with, oh, hello there. And then I'd be like, it's so great to talk to you again. So I just kind of felt like that would have been a cool name for a company because it's like you're greeting someone, there's cards and stuff. So it was more a play on the stationary side of things, but it's really yeah. not that deep or anything. I just thought it was a cute saying. Everybody loves it though. And it works out really well because now we own Oh Hello companies and then we got into promotional products and everyone else is like where's something something promo it's like so boring. oh hello promo is like the best yeah. name it works on oh, so oh many hello levels has done a lot for us yeah like, it, the name has spread really well yeah and it's just so simple it's yeah it's and i think that's what's nice is it's it is simple i the only reg, the only rag 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 is that we put stationary, stationary at the end of it, which is a hard one. There's two spellings. One is I'm not going anywhere. And one is I'm a person who makes paper products. Yep. Uh, and they're one letter off. So that makes it difficult. Plus, it's a big word. So I do think just, yeah. oh, hello. Uh, we've kind of rallied around that. Oh, hello, Co. Because I did, oh, hello, stationary Co. Because I wanted to give us options. Yeah. But, oh, hello, Co. does the exact same thing. Yeah. So, so. that's a thing. That's the story. And I'm sticking to it. That's it. <laughs> Wait for question number five. Question number five is from Aislinn? 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 Nilti? Nolti? Nolti? Nolti. That's definitely a Nolti. She asks, have you and Alex ever disagreed with the direction to take oh hello? Basically on a daily basis. Or a day. <laughs> and or, how or do you day. move past it? 
Well, this kind of goes back to the first uh, question where we separate our relationship from our business. I think that's a very important part. Like we understand that we are very different business minded. That we have, but see, and so that's the nice, I guess that's the perk of, you know, your spouse being your business partner is that if you truly trust them, you know they have the best intentions. Mm -hmm. So no matter what they do, or if you're like, you're so crazy, you know their heart's in the right place. Yeah, for sure. Where I feel like at work you can lose sight or you feel like there's some office politics. Um, and, and that kind of doesn't exist here. No. Nope. So that that helps, right? That there's, there's the trust. And I think when one of us brings an idea to the other one that we're not 100% sure about, we talk about it. We like go through a pro and con list. We ask for research and like, why do you think we need to go in this direction? But more often than not, I think in the end, we just say, well, I trust you. Let's see what happens. Yeah. We don't put all of our money or all of our time into this thing but we give it a, a good shot. Also, something that like from day one, and you'll hear me say this out and about, even though a lot of people, so despite what we look like online, like in person, I tend to be the face of Oh Hello. Uh, more so just because I'm always out and about and I'm, I'm very social, so people ask what we do and they think I own the company and it is not so. This is 100% Kayla's business. And so I know no matter what, when it comes down to it, it is your final say. So. But it never really comes down to It never to comes down like, to her putting no, her foot down. No, um, And I actually prefer, if anyone's wondering, I prefer Alex to be the outward face. He's very good at talking about what we do. He shows passion really well. He's very charismatic. You guys know this. Like, people are drawn to Alex. I, I'm a cat. People are like, oh, she's cool. I like her. But d does she like me? I can't tell. Oh, oh, let's be friends, maybe. So I kind of have this, like, I'm, I'm an introvert. I have a hard time warming up to people. So putting Alex in the forefront, at least in our everyday life for our business, has done wonders for us. And it's my strong suit. And, and I know that. It's what I naturally it. do. Yeah. He prefers doing it. So, so when it, yeah. So, but when it comes to bumping heads and getting back to that, I think, honestly, it's, one, we know we know who the final decision maker is, if it ever came down yeah. to it, and that just avoids. I think avoids, it's important to have that. Just to too. know who so, who gets the final say and have a, have that. That doesn't mean I don't fight tooth and claw for things. Um, sometimes when it's my idea and I'm passionate about yeah. it, and the same goes for Kayla. Like she'll come up with ideas, but the difference between us is just how, like we said earlier, is how we come up with ideas. Kayla is very thorough when she presents an idea. It's like there's it's spreadsheets and diagrams. I, I already and have like, like all the stuff done yeah. for it basically. And, and when I'm just I like, find this for me. Yeah, and for me, it's the opposite. It's like, hey, what do you think about making planes with oh, hello on the side? And it's like, why? Where, where did that well, come from? I saw a plane. It was cute, right? People love cute planes. Of course we can do this. And so I, I tend to be a little naive. Uh, so but I think it's a good balance. We balance yeah, out. Yeah, it's a so, really good balance. Yeah. I think that answers the question. I hope it does. Otherwise, we just arm wrestle. Yes. We do. Oh, I won. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the last and final question is from Anne Meek. Annie McHugh? Man, you guys got some you flavorful got some names. Awesome names, guys. <laughs> All right. So the last question: Do you ever lose hope when sales are down, when visits are low, when you can't find inspirations for new designs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think we A take lot. turns, which is another great thing about working with your significant other is that you have someone who completely understands the hard times, and you can rely on each other. Yeah. I think that's very important. You need someone in your life if you're running a small business that you can just be like, this freaking blows. Yeah. Or like we're so one, I'm 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 very lucky to have Kayla. Uh going back to the introvert, extrovert thing is Kayla is a rock where her emotions come to her and those are her emotions. And if it's a great time and she has a bad time, that's that happens. But if it's a bad time and she's holding strong, that also is remarkable. I am not like that. I, I feed off of energy. Mm -hmm. So I feel bad because I don't feel like I can offer that to you as much. Like when Kayla gets down, I can keep my chipper mood and I can come back and, I, and I'm more like a wave. I come in surges. But a, when Kayla's in a bad mood, I do tend to mimic it. And that I know is an issue because I'm not always there for her. 
But sometimes um, it's nice just to have someone who's like, this is, does freaking suck. Who's at the and then you just party. like, hi, yeah. you just go in your bed, you just watch some TV, you eat cookie dough, and you just let yourself feel like garbage for a day. Yeah. So I honestly believe it's important to feel low because then you appreciate the success. Yeah. And then you can prove to yourself that you can get up the next day and, and you like, keep going. The most frustrating thing to me about owning my own business, and this is true for every business, no matter how big it is, no matter how much you want to say, well, that's not true. Someone in the company is going to feel like this because they're making decisions that are like massive. I mean, even from P&G to uh, Coca-Cola, there, there's someone there feeling this pressure. And what that pressure to me is like, the best way to describe it is like a farmer. Um, one year, weather's fine, everything's great. And you've done a little bit of work. I mean, you did hard work, you did. And your crop was great and you sold everything. The next year, you had to fight for it. You worked way more hours. You uh, you had, you just busted your butt. And uh, even though you worked more hours, you put more time in, you're better than you were the year before. Everything about you is right. You've done everything right. Your crop fails and you get paid less. Yep even though you're better and, and that doesn't make sense because we as humans don't like that especially like if you're just not an owner but an employee you're like i'm better i'm faster i'm gooder gooder i'm i'm better i'm just more i'm, just I'm more gooder. better i'm the goodest i'm the, I'm, I'm the best around you deserve you say, yeah though. you deserve yeah. more pay and rarely where will we you know go the other way on that and yeah. so to me it's really hard because we never get that reward so even though i f i feel like i'm better and i'm doing better it's you hard to you definitely are but it's hard to believe yeah. that yeah sometimes sure. when it's like you know when we started this company i didn't even know how to design i learned how to design after oh hello got started yeah i did most of the design work in the start in yeah the start and so now you look at us and we're like I, I feel so you're much legit. improved like you're a graphic and designer and yet we're doing worse than we did a few months ago or years ago it's and crazy. so that's that's the disconnect that's probably the hardest most hopeless thing about yeah. it uh, which kind of goes off on a tangent but there yeah we do but we, we have each other to bounce back yeah. and again we know these days are coming and we have a contingency plan in case they don't yeah I don't think we're ever like this is the end of the world anymore yeah. We're going to be fine. Alex always says, if he can have me and the cat, he'll be happy. Yeah, I mean. And I think that's a really important way to look at it. Like, sure, we love our house. It's an amazing life. We do feel really lucky. But we're also okay not being here. Yeah. And I think that was or, a really hard thing for me to accept. I think both of us. It took yeah. a, I think we're just now even we're, gripping we're, with those terms. And we're, more open about talking about it because most of the time online everyone's like look at my amazing instagrammable life but yeah we are okay reaching for the sun getting burned and going back and being like hey if we if we have to move you know into a small apartment or that's, that's fine then that's fine because there's no other. shame in that because we did it we tried yeah because like a lot of people come into our house a lot of our friends and so here's a dirty little secret uh, they see our house and they think we just you, we live in this mansion. Our life is great and everything's yeah. awesome. But if you look at everything in our house, we have the only furniture we have bought is for the Oh Hello office from IKEA. So we I think we have a total investment of like a thousand dollars, a twelve hundred dollars over three years of all the furniture we bought. The couches in our living room are donated. The mirrors on the wall we found at discount stores. Discounts. I dumpster dive yeah. uh, when I lived in Flint a ton just to find stuff like a lot of our pegboards. Target throws away a crap ton of Seriously, really good, pe like peg not even damaged. They just were like, ah, the display's over and they throw perfectly pe good pegboard around. Like we are scrappy and we fight for it. Yep. So the thing is, is if you got to be able to look at uh, something in a dumpster and go, that's going to look amazing be, in yeah. a palace, right? Yeah. Or can I paint this in yeah. something? So well, if you want to know more about that stuff, we can do a whole video yeah. about how we're fine with our demise, yeah. I guess, for lack of a better word. So those were a couple of our answers to some of your questions. But if you have any more, definitely leave them in the comments. We would love to answer them down there or maybe film another video if you guys enjoy these sorts of things. But don't forget to subscribe to see more videos from me every single week. Give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. And we will see you guys. Even in if the... you didn't, you should. <laughs> Just give it a thumbs up. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.
And what I mean is I know that in the future, we're probably gonna... All right. Someone's at the door. Is it Domino's? All right. Sorry. Question. Ugh. Shush you! Pepper face. <laughs> Question number three comes from Alexa, and she asks, what do you got? Not you, Alexa. I don't know that one. I'll say it quieter. 